Hi there, I'm Drew Badger, the world's number one English fluency guide, and it is a pleasure to welcome you to another advanced listening practice lesson. It's a pleasure to see you again, and I'm really excited about this lesson because we'll be doing something a little bit different than we normally do, and I might not be speaking as quickly as I typically do in these lessons, but hopefully you enjoy the lesson anyway. Well, this lesson is actually a kind of a segue into a new kind of lesson. We'll see what happens with that. But uh, I received a mail recently from a great learner named Elias, and he was talking about a particular problem he and many other learners, including myself, have. Uh, and this is when you're trying to just give explanations about things in everyday life in the way that I'm speaking now, it can be difficult if, number one, you really don't have the vocabulary for doing so, and number two, if you don't really have good examples of how to do that. And it's when learning a language, this is a really interesting thing about the input you receive versus the output that you give. And this is why uh, when you're just sitting by uh, or just learning something by listening, this is why you're not going to be able to improve as much as if you're actually using the language. So lots of input is great, but you won't really get to that next level unless you actually give the output back, so unless you actually speak and especially practice with native English speakers. So uh, it's kind of actually like when you're driving a car. If you think about how to get from one location to another one, if you're sitting in the passenger seat, you don't really think very clearly or you don't really, I guess you aren't very mindful about how, you know, you get from one area to another. But when you're the driver, you have to actually pay attention. So this is the difference between knowing which way to go and actually doing the driving to get there. So knowing which way to go is the listening part and the driving to get there is the actual speech. Anyway, this is something I actually experience in my everyday life too, even when I'm speaking Japanese. Most of the time I'm just fine, but sometimes there'll be something where I want to express myself in a native and fluent way in Japanese, but maybe I don't know a particular vocabulary word, or maybe I just haven't had, you know, the opportunity to hear how someone expresses something in Japanese. So, uh, to answer Elias's question, when he was asking me about how can we think of a good series, he and I were mailing each other about what's a good way to think about doing this, and so basically we're just going to start in this video right now where I'm giving an example uh, from beginner into intermediate and then advanced ways of expressing a dog, just talking about a dog, just to give you a good example uh, or three different examples of how you might express this in English from, again, basic, intermediate, and advanced levels. Uh, and then hopefully, if you enjoy that, maybe it will become a real series on YouTube and uh, it could potentially be something very helpful for a lot of people, but I'll let you be the judge of that. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to kind of slide over a little bit, make a little bit of room for uh, a couple of pictures of dogs in this video, so hopefully you enjoy that. So we'll begin with uh, just looking at a picture of a dog. Let's get a picture of a dog up here. Uh, so this is a boxer, and to give a basic definition, if I'm a beginner, I would just maybe say a few sentences like, this is a boxer, so the type of dog that it is. This is a boxer. This is a dog. The dog has four legs. The dog likes to run. The dog is my friend. And I'm just making, again, basic sentences like this. So when you're first beginning to do something or you're first learning the language, you're learning just the basic grammar and how to explain things in a basic way. And typically, just what something looks like. As you move on to higher levels, you're getting into more um, kind of intermediate or advanced things, you can be talking about stories related to that thing, which we'll cover in this video, uh, or you could talk about how you're feeling about that particular thing. But just as a basic thing, uh, and this is something interesting that I also notice when I'm teaching my daughter specific things, we're just using very basic language and making it very clear about what we're talking, so or what we're talking about. So if I'm uh, at the zoo with my daughter and I say, oh, look at the lion over there, that's a lion. And I'm just using basic, you know, basic sentences like the lion is big, the lion is loud, that kind of thing. So if we're moving on to more advanced, or I guess we'll take the intermediate approach first. But looking at this intermediate level, uh, we're going to have another picture of a dog up here. So this is a lassie dog or a collie dog. But if I want to be a bit more intermediate with that, I can just give, you know, some more detailed information about how it looks. I can talk about how I feel about that uh, and maybe even have a, a simple story about that dog. So this is a collie. This is a picture of my dog. Actually, it's not my dog, but we'll say it's my dog. 
So this is a Lassie dog, to like the dog from the TV show Lassie. And uh, an interesting thing about dogs is that they are known as man's best friend. So this means that uh, they're always loyal and always trusting people for the most part. So most of the time they are trusting people. And uh, I really enjoy dogs. I have a few dogs at home that I like to play with when I come home from work. And it's a very relaxing thing and a comforting thing to know that when I come home, my dogs are waiting for me, so they're really excited to see me. So these are some interesting facts about dogs in my life. So that was just an intermediate example, just some basic things, uh, maybe a few more intelligent or maybe not necessarily more intelligent, but a few more interesting phrases that are mixed into that. Uh, but again, when you're trying to get more fluent, really the secret is to you begin with something basic and you make sure you can express this in a native way without thinking without being able to, you know, spend a lot of time thinking in your head about what you want to say, and then you begin to add more information to that. So this is a dog, and then this is a dog that my friend bought last year. This is a dog that my friend bought last year that she found at a special pet store in Chicago. So I'm just taking a little bit more and in the same way that you should be practicing, especially this is one of my most valuable pieces of information I give to people, especially when they're beginning, is to always say something more. So typically native speakers or whoever you're going to be speaking with, whomever you're going to be speaking with, uh, they will have Maybe typical questions for you, like where do you work? You know, how many people are in your family? What kind of food do you like? But if you always give the same answer, you're taking away that opportunity for you to grow. So when you're especially trying to use your language, the first time maybe someone says, what's your name? I say, my name is Drew. And then I get used to doing that as I did in Japanese. So my name is Drew, my name is Drew, and I would say this in Japanese. But then I would add something to that. My name is Drew and I'm from Chicago. So maybe it's not information they're specifically asking for, but the opportunity is there for me to actually express myself. So my name is Drew and I'm from Chicago and I like baseball. So I would go on from there. My name is Drew. I'm from Chicago and I like baseball. And uh, last summer I was in a professional ice skating tournament or something like that. I wasn't. But anyway, uh, the point is that you're always taking the opportunity because you receive many of the same questions over and over again to give different and more interesting answers. All right. So now let's move into the more advanced, the way a fluent person might speak about a dog. Uh, and so we'll put another great picture of a dog up here and let's talk about it for a minute. So I have no plan to talk about this dog. I didn't write anything down. I'm just talking about it the way a native speaker would. And I'm noticing, or you should be noticing, that I'll be speaking a little bit more quickly about this, using a few more phrases that are interesting. And if this did, or if this does become an actual series, we would put subtitles and make sure it's easy for you to follow everything. So it's kind of like advanced listening, but at the same time, just giving you uh, actual examples of how people are expressing things. So let's look at the dog up here again. Hello, dog. So this is my dog, Brutus, uh, and he has this lovely hat here. I gave him this hat, actually, when he was just a puppy. Uh, he was at the hat store with me, and we really enjoyed uh, looking at hats together. I don't know why he likes hats so much, but he does like hats. And so we were looking at hats, and I was showing him a couple of different hats. I said, hey, Brutus, which hat do you like? Do you like the green one or the yellow one or the blue one? He said, oh, give me that gray one. Well, actually, he didn't say that, but he kind of, like, sniffed at the gray one, and so I gave him the gray hat. Uh, and every night, uh, he goes to sleep with his hat on. Actually, he can't go to sleep if he doesn't have the hat on. I don't know why that is, but this is just Brutus. That's Brutus for you, and this is just a great phrase you can use when you're talking about, ah, this is something people typically typically do or something typically does, you can say, ah, that's Jack for you, or that's Brutus for you, or that's Drew for you. So it just means, ah, that's a typical thing that he would be doing. So since Brutus normally wears a hat when he sleeps, uh, he actually doesn't wear a hat when he's walking around in the daytime. I don't know why that is. I think we tried that for a while, but the hat fell off of him and uh, didn't really work out very well. 
So just uh, just a thing about dogs and why I like dogs. Um, I think when I was younger, because I'm an only child, so I was the only child in my family, um, we didn't really have, uh, I guess, uh, not a lot of people to play with. So my parents got me a dog and they said, hey, here you go. Here's a, like a friend for you to go play with. So I was excited to have a dog and we would go out. Uh, that dog's name was Lucky. So Lucky and I would go out and play and we would talk about interesting things and, you know, we would have... I guess a lot of fun experiences, and so most of my life, you know, Lucky passed away. He died when I was uh, about 15 years old, but, you know, when I was later in life, uh, then I decided to get my own dog after I could finally have a place where I could have a dog. So that was my example. Again, none of that is true. I don't have a dog named Brutus. That's not my actual dog, And but it would be kind of cool to have a dog that wears a hat all the time when he sleeps. So this is in uh, a more advanced way or an advanced way of speaking like a fluent speaker where you're just speaking fluently and this just means that you're you're talking about things related to something or connected with something or you're describing something in some way but without worrying about exactly what the story is and you're not really uh, again working with a particular script so i could talk for a whole long time i could talk for hours and hours about just a picture uh, so now we're going to look at that picture in a different way so before I just gave a story about the life of that thing, but now I'm going to go into more detail talking about the physical characteristics of the dog in a native way. So in a beginner kind of way, we could look at the dog and say, well, a dog has four legs, a dog likes to smile, a dog, you know, is very friendly, that kind of thing. But in a more native way, we can get more specific and granular, to be granular, uh, this means to just like grains of sand, we can get more and more specific about how we're explaining something. So looking at the dog above me, uh, one interesting thing about dogs is that, uh, you know, some dogs have really, really fine hair. Some dogs have really thick hair. There are lots of different breeds of dogs and breeds are the different kinds of dogs that are available. So all dogs are within the same family or the same species of animal, but we trade them, or I guess not trade them, uh, but train them and then breed them so we can have particular characteristics. So Brutus, this dog right here that we're looking at, uh, he's just a really kind of friendly dog, but he was raised as a bloodhound. So a hound that can smell things and track different foods and other things. So when we're out hunting, he can go out and find different things. And so Brutus has a really uh, nice looking coat. The coat is another way of describing um, how the skin or the uh, the hair looks. So you can talk about an animal having a nice coat. So if you want to talk about your friend's dog saying, wow, like that dog is a really nice looking dog. He has really nice hair. You can say, wow, that dog has a really nice coat, something like that. So anyway, uh, just looking at this dog, it's got uh, a really interesting, nice kind of smile. Looks like he's actually dreaming right now. He's probably got something interesting thinking about uh, in his head. Maybe he's thinking about what kind of hat he'll wear tomorrow. I have no idea. But anyway, you can see how uh, in a series like this that I would create, this would be something where we're looking at much more detail about things and how actually a native speaker would impress or I guess express excuse me, something in a native way. So if you do have questions about this, or if you think this would be an interesting series, I'm going to post a comment below this video. So in the comments section, I will just say, would you like me to make a video series helping you describe uh, just everyday things in English like this? And you can even give some comments within that comment or below that comment, uh, replying to that comment. If you're uh, having specific kinds of phrases or kind of things that you'd like to describe. So really think about situations in your life in the same way I will be thinking about them uh, from my own life where in a situation where maybe I'm, I'm trying to speak Japanese and there's something I want to communicate but I don't exactly know how. So up until now I've talked more about specific phrases and I made a few different series where we're talking about things like how to say uh, like where is the bus or how to excuse yourself from doing something. But really, I'd like to help you, if I can, speak just the same way that I'm speaking right now. So you could sit in front of a camera, in front of a group of people, it doesn't matter, a conversation, and you can just continuously speak like this. And you'll notice when I am speaking like this, like I actually have kind of like a thought in my head about maybe what I'd like to say. But again, I don't have a script for any of these videos. I'm just sitting in I'm having a conversation with you and trying to give you examples of how we would speak. So I do get comments from people saying, why don't you make these videos shorter? You talk a lot about whatever, but really just the 
the point of these is not for me to sit and talk for a long time, but it's to give you lots of different examples about how we would express things. So in the same way that I mentioned earlier about the difference between being the passenger in the car and being the driver, what I'd like you to think about is when you're listening to these kind of videos, especially advanced listening practice or this new series, if I create it, uh, like not not just listening to what I say, but also trying to repeat what I say and to come up with your own ways of expressing those same things. So without worrying about if it's grammatically correct, because you'll hear I'm using not necessarily grammatically correct English all the time. Most of the time it's correct, but when native speakers are discussing things, they often make grammatical mistakes about things. But it's more understanding that they're fluent and they're expressing themselves in a particular way, so people don't really worry about that. Anyway, if in the comment that I put below this, this video. If I have uh, 100 likes on that, then I will make that a series. Again, I want to do things that are helpful, and if people don't think the idea would be very helpful, I don't want to waste your time with more videos like that. So anyway, if that comment that I place in the comment section below this video gets over 100 likes, so 100 likes or more, then I will make that series, and it uh, should be pretty interesting. Hopefully you can continue to help uh, Elias and I create that series, and we'll see if it happens. Anyway, this has been a another great uh, listening practice video. I hope you have enjoyed it. It's been fun. It's another great morning here in Japan, but you might be able to hear a little bit in the background. The cicadas are now out. It is summertime in Japan, and in summertime it gets loud over here. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, do like this video. Let me know what you'd like me to talk about next if you have any questions, and I will uh, see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Did you know that most English learners have just one major fluency frustration that stops them from enjoying conversations and becoming a successful speaker? For you, it might be your accent, or that you hesitate to think and translate in your head before you speak. Whatever your biggest learning frustration may be, we've prepared specific advice just for your situation to help you finally reach your English learning goals. Click on the link in the upper right of this video to turn your biggest learning weakness into a strength and start getting fluent two, three, or even ten times faster.